Hi everyone, Jean Lurson here. Recently on my YouTube channel, somebody asked the, a very interesting question and that was, could I explain why I use the colors I use in a particular painting? Obviously there are a number of answers. Every artist has their favorite colors that they like to use. But why do they use certain colors in certain paintings? So I thought the best way I could describe this would be to go over some of the paintings I have done and why I've used particular colors. Now this is a misty beach scene that I painted many years ago. If you're looking through the mist, at a scene, you'll see that a lot of the colors blend and look the same. So I had to create that impression here. So I basically really used only three colors. And that was, I, it was indigo mixed with raw sienna in varying degrees. I had more yellow in the sea, more blue to create the distant rocks in, in the background. And then as it came closer, I used more yellow in the blue to create this, the sea sand area. And I used some burnt sienna to create the rocks and the small stones and rocks on the beach. And I just used some white gouache to add some seagulls, which finished off this painting. So that was why I used these colors. Now, to create a misty scene you can you don't have to use indigo you can use a number of blues however gets back to the favorites indigo is one of my favorite colors so i wanted to see if i could do that here with this painting and it actually i think it really was successful and somebody did buy it from me somebody who actually lived by the seaside now this is a different thing altogether i was creating an abstract landscape again i used indigo indigo with burnt umber and I used some cling wrap to create these textures here and some acrylic inks just to create this dead branch in the painting. And, and then I used um, the yellow here, I believe was quinacridone and gold, some quinacridone and gold. Um, why did I put quinacridone and gold with the blue? Blue and yellows go nicely together and I knew it would make a harmonious painting. Making your paintings harmonious is very important. Ways to do that is to use a limited palette, first of all, and then you want to use colors that, bl that go well together. And that actually really comes through experience, maybe through reading, um, studying color harmony, Color theory is a very large subject and I don't want to get into that right now. I just want to explain my reasons for using different colors. Here I did an abstract painting of a, the head of a dandelion once the uh, flower had died and the only way I could get this to come forward was to have darker colors behind the the dandelion head and I again used indigo uh, I believe this was um, could have been Indian yellow I'm not even sure it was a long time ago and I also used some acrylic ink here so that's why I used that again a misty scene but I didn't use my favorite indigo here so that shows you that you it's not just one color blue that where you can create a misty scene. Um, I my house overlooks the uh, Richardson Bay, which flows into San Francisco Bay, and at certain times of the year we get the fog and the mist coming in, and it makes a very beautiful subject to paint. And this was just literally the the mist scene was two colors, and I used. I used Payne's Grey mixed with raw sienna. I used some burnt sienna just to fill in the boats and the reflections in the boats. But 
it just shows you how you can do a painting with really few, very few colors. And that's what makes this a harmonious painting. Here is where I used indigo again, but I used the indigo by itself in the upper part of the sky. And then this was, I believe, Indian yellow and burnt sienna mixed with some blue for the trees and the foreground here. And why did I use this? I wanted to see if I could do a sunset scene with indicator without doing any reds in the sunset. I'm showing you different types of paintings because I have different reasons for using color sometimes. Here, this was the, this, I wanted to do a painting of the peak of Mount Tam, which is a large mountain in Marin County where I live. But I wanted a lot of texture in the painting, so I knew that I wanted to use burnt umber, which granulates very well. When, and I decided to help it along using some granulation medium. So this was uh, a painting where I used actually indigo and mixed with some raw sienna, making a very pale sky. I didn't want the sky to be dominant. And this was a slightly darker shade of the sky with a distant peak behind Mount Tam. But the main focus was the textures here in the peak. and. I used raw sienna, uh, I think there was some burnt sienna, burnt umber, and I think I used a little bit of Payne's Grey in this area here, and I just used a lot of granulation medium to make everything run down and create these interesting textures. Now, in this painting, I wanted to, to capture moonlight reflecting on the bay. We get some, we get beautiful uh, moonlight scenes on the bay and I, I wanted to see if I could capture that here. Again, I've used three colors. I used French ultramarine with burnt sienna to create this gray sky, gray dark sky and the little distant um, hills across the other side of the bay. Um, there's a bit of raw sienna here very pale just to get the reflected moonlight on the water and then burnt sienna and French ultramarine to create this cliff in the foreground with the tree. This is an African scene and it's the African bush felt and it has a it, it has totally has its own colors and atmosphere and I wanted to create that atmosphere and I, I tried many colors before I actually completed this painting. I have used burnt sienna, burnt umber, and some raw sienna. And those were the only three colors that I used here. These are the famous acacia trees that grow on the plains of Africa, and they're really beautiful. And I just created them in a silhouette with burnt sienna and French ultramarine. As you know, green, red, and red and orange go together very well. And while red is the opposite of green, orange also does pretty well with greens. And I used um, perylene green here, one of my favorite green colors that come in a tube, and some quinacridin gold for this area here. And I used a lot of texture with materials that I'm pressing into the paint when it's wet. And then I just used sepia ink to create this tree, small tree here. This is one of my favorite paintings. This is a painting which I called a keeper, which I have framed and, and, and I have hanging in my dining room. I love this color, which is Daniel Smith's Thalo Turquoise. And this is burnt sienna and I've used a little bit of sepia ink here and basically those are the only colors I used for this painting but I loved how it came out. I painted, the, uh, it, painted it in two coats. I did the sky and this 
a foreground area, put some cling wrap over it. After it was dried, I added in the trees. But it just was one of those things that worked for me. Sometimes when I experiment, I didn't know, when I started the painting, I didn't even know what I was going to paint. I just had bought this color and I thought I really wanted to see what I could do with it. And it was just a magical thing that worked the first time. This is another African scene which is literally all, almost all yellow. Uh, I have used some burnt sienna, some raw sienna and burnt umber. And those are the three colors to show a very hot, dry desert scene. And that, that is why I used these colors to create this kind of atmosphere. This was all about trying to get the atmosphere of a stormy sky over a marsh. And I um, used burnt sienna, French ultramarine and raw sienna for, for this. And those are the only three colors. And I think I managed to create this atmosphere in this painting. This was a bit of fun. I wanted to see if I could paint minimalist subject and yet make it a little interesting. So I used a lot of grays here, which was uh, indigo with burnt sienna creating the hillside and then and, and some of the and the, in the paler version in the sky and then I wanted to make it pop a little bit so I I uh, created these orange trees so I'm going to do a quick abstract landscape using some of my favorite colors and I'm going to wet the sky I want to make it quite wet because I'm I'm using the Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith, which is a very strong color, a very strong staining color. And I've got my board at an angle. Actually, I want to put it at an angle like that. And just take a thirsty brush. I've, I've only, only wet the sky at this point, so I'm just going to leave that as it is, maybe maybe add a little darker color at the top here because we've got to remember that it dries lighter. And I just want to pick up this water at the bottom here. Now, now I'm going to go to my number 12 silver black velvet and I'm going to add in the um, for the I guess you could call it a hillside that Actually, I just meant to do this first with my spray bottle and get these droplets, which gives me some nice texture. See, I, I like the way this creates these interesting textures here. And now I want to bring in some of the sky area to just to make this a harmonious painting. So I'm going to where this has dribbled down here. I'm just going to let that work its way and I'm going to actually define the uh, top of the hillside. Um, I think I want to spray this a little bit make it run and I just want to maybe do some flicking as well now we got some of that into the sky and I didn't want to do that that's why you should actually cover your cover your sky area if you don't want any of the color to bleed in there. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I start putting some more texture in the ground area and maybe when it's dry I'll paint a tree or two 
just to make it more interesting. And it basically I'm just using my favorite colors and this is just an experiment. It may not turn out to be a painting that I like, but it, it tells me a lot. It tells me what colors look good together. And generally, um, it gives me a good idea if I want to do a larger painting, whether these colors will work. Now that this part is starting to get dry, I'm going to do some little spattering. And if I hold my spatula like this, I can control where the splatters go. And And if I want to, I could cover this area here, which I, I will do. Let's say we cover that with some paper towel. And maybe I'll even use a little bit of the, the Thalo turquoise. I also want to use some white gouache, but I'm going to do that when this is dry. I always love using gouache as well when I'm doing spattering because it's um, opaque medium and adds some interesting textures to the painting. So we let that dry and then I'll work on it further. Now that it's dry I'm going to I'm going to take my hog's hair brush with some of the phthalo turquoise and and I'm going to create a tree here and I'll I want to do it a little off center and I'm just trying to decide how big I want the tree to be. I think I think I should have made it much bigger. And and I think I'll go with a finer brush. I'm going to use my dagger brush. I've actually um, wet the trunk too much. So. I think I want a little bit of Cracked and burnt orange in the trees also. I just want to create a little bit more texture. And this is my uh, dagger brush from Cheap Joe's. It's, it's a great brush for doing fine lines. And I'm not sure I even, even like that, so I'm just going to spritz it a little bit so it'll blend in. These are decisions I make all the time as I'm going along. I'm just going to leave it and let it dry. I think um, I could have left out the white in this particular painting. I don't think it added anything. I'm going to get rid of a little bit of the white. Now the whole purpose of this video is think about your composition and then think about the colors that you're going to use. It's also good to do a lot of experimenting. Just take your paints that you own. You don't have to go and buy what I have. You don't have to go and buy what, what anyone has. Choose the colors that you like and then experimenting, mixing those colors together, uh, using them together in a painting and keep a, to a minimal palette. That's, in my opinion, very important. I try not to use more than three colors in a painting. It helps to create harmony 
uh, in your piece. So I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration and if you did please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time.